In this film, we perform a tour of the normal segmental anatomy of the bronchi by means of bronchoscopy on a healthy volunteer under local anesthesia. After passage through the nose, the pharynx and the epiglottis, the glottis is reached. After inspection of the vocal cords and arotenoids, the bronchoscope is advanced into the trachea. While staying in the middle of the airway lumen, the trachea is carefully inspected. Eventually, we reach the main carina, where the left and right main bronchi originate. We then rotate the bronchoscope 90 degrees clockwise and enter the right main bronchus. At the end of the right main bronchus, we recognize several important anatomical landmarks. We identify the orifice of the right upper lobe, the right carina 1, the orifice of the middle lobe, and the orifice of the right lower lobe. We then enter the right upper lobe, which divides into the apical segmental bronchus, or RB1, the posterior segmental bronchus, or RB2, and the anterior segmental bronchus, or RB3. We then head back and extend the bronchoscope into the intermediate bronchus. Here, we identify the orifice of the middle lobe, the right carina 2, the basal branches, and the apical segment of the lower lobe, or RB6. We then enter the middle lobe bronchus, which divides into the lateral segmental bronchus, or RB4, and the medial segmental bronchus, or RB5. After going back to the intermediate bronchus, we identify and enter the apical segment of the lower lobe, or RB6. When we extend further down the lower lobe, we reach the basal branches. The anterior basal branch, or RB8, the lateral basal branch, or RB9, and the posterior basal branch, or RB10. In most cases, the medial basal branch, or RB7, can be found at the medial side of the lower lobe bronchus. In this patient, however, the RB7 is absent. This picture from a different patient shows an example of the medial basal branch, or RB7, of the lower lobe. After inspection of the basal branches, the bronchoscope is then slowly retracted up to the level of the main carina. After rotating 90 degrees counterclockwise, we enter the left main bronchus, which is significantly longer than the right main bronchus. At the end of the left main bronchus, we can identify the orifice of the lingula, the left carina 2, which separates the upper and lower lobe, and the apical segment, or LB6, of the lower lobe. We advance into the lower lobe and first inspect the LB6 that immediately divides into three subsegmental branches, LB6A, LB6B, and LB6C. We retract from LB6 and continue further into the lower lobe. Here, we can identify the anterior basal, or LB8, lateral basal, or LB9, and posterior basal, or LB10, segmental branches. A medial basal branch is usually absent on the left side. After inspection of the basal branches, the bronchoscope is slowly retracted in order to reach the left upper lobe. 
When entering the left upper lobe, we recognize the upper division bronchus, the left carina 1, and the lingula. The lingular bronchus divides into the superior segmental bronchus, or LB4, and the inferior segmental bronchus, or LB5. The bronchoscope is retracted and advanced into the upper division bronchus. Here we can identify the apical posterior segmental bronchus, or LB1 plus 2, and the anterior segmental bronchus, or LB3. The LB1 plus 2 is often difficult to inspect because of its steep angle. Once the bronchoscope is positioned well, we can see the apical bronchus, or LB1, and the posterior bronchus, or LB2. Now, all segments have been inspected, and the bronchoscope is slowly retracted.